Hello and welcome to another jungle video and in this one we are going to be having a look at the best junglers that should be using and abusing first strike. Ever since the predator nerf those who are looking for a bit more utility and inspiration in their rune choices other than raw damage and output have been feeling a bit lost and honestly there should be no need for it. Not only are there champions that are thriving on first strike and we all know it there are some who simply refuse to go a rune that offers them an amazing first rune page coupled with dominating secondary pages that allow them to actually play the game in a slightly different way that suits their champion and playstyle better. I don't think that needs much more of an introduction, so as always, if you enjoy and learn something, please consider leaving a like and of course subscribing. Coaching signups are on their Patreon link below as well as a new bootcamp option. My live coaching companion guide is also linked below. And partnering with us on this video is Mobilytics. With Season 12 fresh around the corner, actually starting next week, you will need the most up-to-date champion pages not only in terms of itemization and runes, but also in terms of how to play your champion. Should you have a nemesis in a champion, you can head to the counters tab which gives you a full breakdown of 200 IQ strategies and the champions you can use to inflict your wrath. If you simply want to learn a champion to increase your pool, you can head to the guide page which will give you strength, weaknesses, power spikes and a full game plan in addition to a full combo page researched by only the most gifted mechanics gods. Finally, if you want to mimic the best in the world, the pro page will show you all the details from runes to abilities to items. Get the competitive edge for season 12 with Mobilytics via the link below. Very briefly, I need to talk about why First Strike is such a great rune for junglers, especially the ones in this video, and why some junglers are simply struggling when they shouldn't be because this rune exists, and in other cases, people just aren't optimizing their builds and their champion and basically are struggling with the current rune sets and itemization to fit into the game. It's also particularly good on assassins, and that's because attacks or abilities against an enemy champion within 0.25 seconds of entering champion combat grants 5 gold and First Strike for 3 seconds. This 3 second period causes you to deal 10% extra damage against champions and grants you 100% for melee, 70% for ranged champions of the bonus damage dealt as gold. But the point is, if you're an assassin who not only has insane amounts of burst damage up front and especially over the course of 3 seconds as you unload your entire existence and trauma onto the enemy champion you're fighting, you really are maximizing the gold income on this rune while getting 10% extra damage at all phases, which means early game while you do not have the reliable burst of an electrocute, while you don't stack infinitely for the end game and dark harvest, you are getting some damage bonus. For reference, I will be releasing a good tutorial next week on Season 12 gameplay and the champion I focused on used First Strike. Instead of having your 2, 3, 4,000 Electrocute Dark Harvest proc damage spikes, he had 1,600 First Strike damage and 1,600 First Strike free cash monies. And because Booties, Stopwatch, Futures Market and Cosmic Insight are such great runes, the fact that we see Cosmic Insight Booties as a secondary page still all the time, that should let you know how strong it is. The only reason people didn't run it as a first page is because the keystones were all just terrible. And to those of you saying, well, the damage is minuscule, why would you do this? Yeah, but it wasn't just everyone running Predator because of the movement speed utility, it was up all the time, you could easily gank, and those champions who did not need that damage to kill, they benefited from this movement speed buff, and still got a small slice of pie in the form of damage from the rune. Same thing from First Strike, except instead of movement speed, it's an investment into your scaling, your itemization, and your relevancy in the mid to the late game. Also, I don't have to explain to you that Futures Market and getting items soon, especially completed items like a Ghost Blade and a Mythic, yeah, that's pretty good for, well, everyone. Right, first up, I have to talk about the one and only, the legendary one-eyed hunter, Rengar. A favorite of mine, a favorite of yours, a favorite of the channels, everybody loves a good Rengar, minus your ADC mains pre-shield bow, now they're complaining, I don't know why. But the knife cat has been having an extremely difficult time ever since the season 11 changes went through. This keeps getting worse with the Chemtank Dragon map, however some tech has evolved that is solving some of his problems, and actually makes him kinda strong if you play it correctly. And that tech very much is a first strike room page. The booties are great, cosmic insight is huge, and yes, we have spoken about a prowler's claw page that works with Rengar, especially in these dragonless, bushless maps. But along with his domination secondary page and relentless hunter, he is going full on crit, baby. He will very frequently alternate between the eclipse and the dusk blade. As since Reef is a secondary go to, we have some Lord Dominic sending their regards as he heads towards an infinity edge. Every now and then there is a collector, but the whole point is, using this first strike not only do you not need the damage really with this build that you would get from an electrocute for example, but with Futures Market, with the movement speed from the boots, with the cosmic inside, you can farm faster, and when you do go fisting and fighting, you're actually getting direct infusion into your build, and honestly, Rengar just scales an unholy amount with itemization and raw stats, your bone tooth stacking is great, and I will also be releasing a Rengar gameplay on this build on the gameplay channel, so check out that link in the description below. And next up, we have his Nemesis, Kha'Zix. 
And unlike his hated brother, Kha'Zix doesn't need First Strike to be successful. Kha'Zix is always one of the best junglers as a byproduct of being able to adapt, change, evolve, and so on. That means while you can, in theory, use Conqueror again, your electrocute is always good and reliable. The Dark Harvest being the most popular rune at a 51% win rate, Kha'Zix just doesn't always need those raw stats, and getting ahead through itemization with the First Strike rune is proving pretty good. First Strike has a 1% higher win rate than Dark Harvest at 52%, and is only slightly behind in pick rate. Despite the Q nerfs, Kha'Zix Kha'Zix is still overkilling people. Despite the Q nerfs, Kha'Zix is still finding his way with our evolves to get into lanes to scale, to rip the early game apart, and because you really don't need that damage, it's nice, but you don't need it, and you really want to get your itemization complete with your evolves as soon as possible, First Strike is just enabling him to the next level. Obviously, I just go with the raw data on these builds, so the Ravenous is there as the most picked, but you can go with any rune on that road depending on your playstyle. Next up, we have Evelyn, and just like Volleybird, just like Fiddlesticks, some of the rune choices aren't really suiting her in this current meta. The changes to experience, a shift into a bit more of a fisting, fighting, ganking meta. This doesn't please Evelyn, so with the scaling rune Dark Harvest just not being very good on her because, you know, you need to stack it, and while Electrocute is the default most picked and usual thing to annihilate ADCs and make Sorakas cry, that doesn't really help you if you can't use that Electrocute to kill people early and have no camps to fall back to. The high variance of ganking is something that Evelyn does not always enjoy. So what's a girl to do other than go for a strike? Pick rate is not that high at around 17%, but it's the only rune with a win rate above 50%. I also found a smurf in Korea getting to Master Tier 250 LP just playing Evelyn for a strike. You can still go absolute focus and gathering the storm if you want. You can actually go domination also. The point is, don't write her off in the total meta until you've tried to optimize her playstyle, fuse the way you want to play her, what helps her kit the best, and how it keeps her relevant in a meta where you can't really AFK farm and scale. And the exact same thing should be said for Fiddlesticks. Except he is what we call someone who has found a home with Electrocute after the Predator nerves. You can still go Predator with a reduced win rate. Dark Harvest I don't enjoy, but you can also do this. A nice three-way split common amongst all mains to pick one that suits your playstyle the best. And then I'm looking at the 53% win rate on first strike. Ladies and gentlemen, what does Fiddlesticks enjoy the most? Uh, of course, if you have Predator, Boots and Futures Market, really nice. If you're going standardized builds, hey, Stopwatch as well as Cosmic Insight. All four of those are glorious. Pick your favorites, pick first strike, play the game farming and sequencing, optimizing your camp experience and maximizing those early gains. Fight when you need to, but not too often. Get a gank if you can, track, get a counter gank. You do not have Predator, which means you have to go back to playing like when you had Electrocute, except you still won't have that upfront damage. So you kind of have to play it a little bit like Dark Harvest, except instead of damage in terms of raw rune stats, you're getting damage in terms of that itemization spike because it is quite juicy. Again, every champion in the footage in this video will have first strike so you can see how it works. It's definitely a very different play style, but it's one that is finding a niche success. Yeah, yeah, I know, I couldn't make this without Talon though, what are you gonna do? The guy is like a poster boy for first strike, even though his win rate isn't as good as a lot of people in this video. Most picked rune set for him, Eclipse, Ghostblade, Abuser, that is the standard assassin meta. Yes, the 130% damage from 150% damage bonus to monsters while clearing has impacted him a little bit, because now he's forced to, you know, actually fight, gank, and move. He can still fall back to clearing very, very quickly, he still counter jungles like a menace, and he really doesn't need the damage to kill you. That's why he still loved the predator meta, didn't really matter, you could just go Ghostblade blade into gore drinker or now of course eclipse and just kill people but you were also really fast now you can kill people and you get really rich one can hope right no from further but the matching assassin that requires immense amounts of skill where talon does not is Kiana. While Electrocute still is the most popular rune page, 47% pick rate with a 47% win rate. That doesn't sound too good. And then you look, oh wait, there's a 40% pick rate on first strike? Wait, almost a 50.5% win rate? That's a 3% win rate increase just by shifting a rune with a similar play rate. Okay. So why aren't you Kiana players doing it? Same reason for Talon, same reason for all the other assassins in this video. She thrives on being ahead in itemization. You can int the early game, but get a lot of gold from first strike in Futures Market. All of a sudden you have Ghost Blade, you have Eclipse, and now you can hit people and kill them, assuming you can pilot the champion whatsoever. She is obviously best at Master Plus, I do not recommend it below that unless you are really serious about climbing through diamond, have good mechanics and will dedicate yourself to the thigh life. Those with an affliction for the ab life will know that Kane is also doing very well on first strike. Yes, yes, Conqueror is obviously doing very well, but First Strike has a high percent win rate by 4% over Electrocute, obviously at the stage in the game, and also 1% over Dark Harvest, with a higher pick rate. The thing is, if you are going the Mana Moon build, now you can effectively go your Ingenious Hunter stack and stack it really fast, go and hit people and get form in orbs, and now you're not only inting for form like you should, but you're also getting gold for it. So now when you get those 7 minute forms and you kind of have Ghostblade completed, what is anyone going to do to you? Exactly, ban Kane in the next lobby. 
and I have to throw in Zed. He is going with the absolutely typical talent Kiana page. And while he suffers greatly, Canyon is relentlessly spamming this champion. He loves the fact that he still farms faster than talent now. He loves the fact that you can outplay people mechanically. He loves the fact that he can go and overkill people and so doesn't need a combat rune and can just get huge itemization leads. While Zed really can do the electrocute thing and it does have a very similar play rate as well as win rate, rather than First Strike being a default page that you absolutely must go, he is more like Fiddlesticks where you just have to decide on your playstyle. Do you want electrocute or do you want First Strike? And of course, much like Fiddlesticks, that comes down to your playstyle. I just did a Zed gameplay on my secondary channel so you can have a look at that if you want to see. But with the secondary Ultimate Hunter page, it's really something that is insanely spicy. Winning lanes, losing lanes, Zed is going to get his. Don't worry, there will be some non-assassin choices in this video, but obviously they are benefiting the most from this. Echo is one that still thrives on Dark Harvest. Actually, just did that on the gameplay as well, so both Zed and Echo recently covered. What kept him relevant in the most recent meta was the Predator. It allowed him to offset some of those slower clears to rotate with those counter ganks, which is obviously what he's best at. However, with that being absolutely gutted beyond belief, Dark Harvest has returned, and with the meta shifting a little bit, he is doing okay. He's not OP, he's not super strong, but he definitely has a place. And like Rengar, he has no keys stones above 50% win rate only first strike. We have all seen what a fed echo does. His passive nearly one shots a Soraka, his ultimate melts your whole team when they just walk into the ghost. The guy really doesn't need more damage. The fun is having that death cap, that lich bane, that rock about, that magi, the void stuff, getting 20, 30 stacks, and then just annihilating everyone. Really, it's fun, but you know what's more fun? Taking first strike and getting those things sooner. Echo scales so damn well with itemization, he really doesn't need the stacks from Dark Harvest to kill people, and so the gold investment into death cap, into lich bane, into rock about, is really noticeable and honestly it's a fun playstyle. Obviously Dark Harvest gives you the basic way to play the game and the different room page. Make your decision. If you're a low impact echo player early, you know, you really don't want to force those ganks. You kind of struggle to get Dark Harvest stacks. This could be an interesting alternative playstyle. And finally, we have Karthus. Now, Karthus is an excellent user of First Strike. Dark Harvest, though, is significantly outperforming it. 21% of his pick rate is First Strike, but it's only got a 47% win rate. Dark Harvest, on the other side, has 49% win rate. Yes, Karthus is actually struggling. But if you're good with him, you understand rinse clears, and you still know how to maximize your experience while throwing in those ganks, good map awareness for your ultimate, First Strike just allows you, the same thing with Echo, to get dominating itemization spikes way sooner. And when that's a global ultimate that's point and click, well, you get where I'm going with this. It is a little bit harder to stack given the nature of the champion, and that's why the win rate is lower. Dark Harvest is just reliable. You can have a full domination page, which is what we want. And if you are going for First Strike, do you choose to go Precision Secondary as you normally would, or do you choose to go into domination? So while it can and does make sense, and there are some players just popping off and loving the playstyle, the loss of either domination or or precision is something I'm not really willing to give up myself, but he is one of the good users of First Strike. However, in the bonus section, we have three champions that actually have a higher percentage win rate on First Strike, just really low percent pick rates. They come in the form of Talia, Graves, and Nidalee. It's worth noting that Canyon is running First Strike on all three of these champions, actually almost every champion that he plays, and he's good at it, and it's working. But remember, just because you can doesn't mean you should, and in the case of these three champions, that's where we lie. Actually, might as well put Karthus in that as well. Yes, you can, in theory, use it on Talia for a bit of scaling, but she's just absolutely such a monster with her Q poke at stacking Dark Harvest, the First Strike utility there really isn't worth giving up that insane scaling you have from that domination rune set because it is just so reliable. I'm seeing a lot of Nidalees in Korea also try to stay relevant into the mid and the late game with First Strike investing that gold, but what Nidalee is really great at is high pressure jungling, ganking, invading, pathing with the intent to end early, and the full benefit of First Strike never really gets fully realized, whereas the stacks from Dark Harvest, the reliable damage from Electric, you the Conqueror if you want to go Bruiser, all of this just suits a champion that wants to fight a lot more than First Strike kind of wants you to do. And so while you can use First Strike on her, and she's one of the best users, the combat stats from the other runes simply outweigh the benefits. And while Canyon and other Grave Savants are using First Strike, they can because they know how the champion works inside and out. The rest of you, Fleet Footwork is still the best, Dark Harvest is still great. First Strike can just feel like an absolute trap for a champion that, like Nidalee, wants to abuse the map, use Jungle Flow to get into the enemy jungler's phase. You're not looking to totally AFK, and if you're gonna do that, Fleet Footwork is fine. Graves has no issue dishing out damage and getting gold through counter jungling and split pushing. So unless you just love that playstyle, like Canyon does, there's really no reason to do it. Well, there you have it. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and learned something. I hope you also enjoyed the coaching video that I released on Wednesday, something a little different. Happy 2022 to those who use a Gregorian calendar. Thank you very much for watching, and as always, I will see you all in the next tutorial.